Now we are going to turn to the process of implicit differentiation, which will allow us to find, among other things, the tangent lines to a general curve of the plane and not only to the graph of a function. So let's go back to the tangent line problem, which was a motivation for us to introduce a derivative of a function. In the case that we've looked at so far, that is the case of the tangent line to the graph of a function, if we have a function and its graph and we pick a point on that graph, so it has coordinates a f of a, and we consider the tangent line to the graph at that point, then we know how to obtain its equation. This line has slope f prime of a, where f prime is the derivative of the function f, and therefore the equation is given by y minus f of a is f prime of a multiplied by x minus a. If now we look at a more general kind of plane curve, so something with equation is just some relationship between x and y, where x and y are the coordinates of the points on that curve. And we pick a point on that curve, look at the tangent line, and now we want to find its equation. So how do we proceed? Let's start with a simple example. Let's say we are looking for the tangent line to the curve of equation x squared plus y squared equal 4 at the point of coordinate 1 root 3. Notice that this point 1 root 3 is indeed on the curve because if we plug x equal 1 y equal root 3 the equation is satisfied. So geometrically, what kind of curve is that? Well, if I pick a point of coordinates x, y in the plane, and I look at this right triangle, and this side is x, or absolute value of x, and this side is y, or absolute value of y, and it's a right triangle, therefore, by the Pythagorean theorem, uh, the hypotenuse is root of x squared plus y squared. In other words, this root of x squared plus y squared is simply the distance between the point and the origin. Therefore, this x squared plus y squared in the equation of the curve is a distance between a point on the curve and the origin, and the point is on the curve is this distance is 2, so that the square of the distance is 4. In other words, the curve is a set of points at distance 2 from the origin, that is, the circle centered at the origin and of radius 2. Now we have the point of coordinate 1, root 3 on this circle, and we want to find an equation to the tangent line. In order to do that with what we have seen so far, what we could do is look at the equation of the circle and solve for y, and we would get two pieces. y is root of 4 minus x squared, or negative root of 4 minus x squared. This corresponds to the upper half and lower half circle. The point of tangency that we are considering, of coordinates 1, root 3, is on the upper half circle, corresponding to the function f of x is root of 4 minus x squared. So, to find the slope of the tangent line, we could just differentiate that function. It is a composite, so to differentiate we use the chain rule. We get the derivative of the root function, which is 1 over 2 root, evaluated at 4 minus x squared and then we multiply by the derivative of the function inside, so we get the negative 2x on top. The 2 cancels out, and in any case, when we evaluate this at x equal 1, we get negative 1 over root 3, and this is the slope of the tangent line, and the tangent line is therefore the line of slope negative 1 over root 3 going through the point of coordinate 1 root 3, and this way we can obtain the equation. So, to what extent can we generalize that to a more general curve? Well, you see that here we had to solve for y, and this might be extremely complicated if the equation of the curve is complicated. On the other end, what we learn from what we have done is that, even if it is difficult to do, a general curve of the plane is essentially uh, something that could be cut in small pieces that are graphs of function. 
However, we may not want to have to do that explicitly because it might be difficult to find the expression for these functions and it might also be difficult to even know on which one of these many pieces the point that we're considering lies. So we need a better way to do that. So let's go over this example one more time with a method, a different method, that will be easier to adapt to more complicated curves. The basic idea is to differentiate implicitly, that is, to differentiate as if y was a function of x, even if it's not. Around these curves, these curves are not graphs of functions, so y cannot be solved explicitly at, as a function of x alone, at least not with just one piece y equal f of x. However, it could be done modulo uh, having different, uh, different equations for y. So in other words, y is not a function of x, but it is locally, so on some small piece of the graph around the point of tangency, we could find some expression in terms of x. Since when we differentiate, this is a local process, for the purpose of differentiating, we can treat y as a function of x. So this is the key. We're going to differentiate with respect to x, treating y as a function of x, even if explicitly y is not a function of x. So what does that mean? In this case, if I differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, on the right hand side I have the derivative of 4, so I will get 0. On the left hand side I have the derivative of x squared plus y squared. When I differentiate x squared, I get 2x because I'm differentiating the power of the variable. On the other hand, when I differentiate y squared, I get 2y multiplied by dy over dx. Indeed, we treat y as a function of x, so y squared is the square of a function, and therefore we differentiate it using the chain rule. We get 2 times a function multiplied by the derivative of the function. And this dy dx, the rate of change of y with respect to x, is also the derivative of y with respect to x, treating y as a function of x. Now, all we have to do is solve for dy over dx, and we obtain negative 2x over 2y, and the 2, of course, cancels out. You see that we obtain something that depends on both x and y. This is to be expected, because now we are looking at the curve globally, and if I give you just x, you cannot decide whether I'm looking at the point of coordinates, say, 1 root 3, or the point of coordinates 1 negative root 3. Of course, if I'm at one point or the other, the slope of the tangent line is not going to be the same. So this is to be expected that in this process, Unlike in the case of a regular graph of a function, the y over dx is going to depend on both x and y. Now we can plug x equal 1 and y equal root 3, in other words, the coordinates of the point of tangency, and we get the slope of our tangent line, negative 1 over root 3. And therefore, the tangent line is the line through the point of coordinate 1 root 3 of the given slope, negative 1 over root 3, and we have the equation of the tangent line. Now to summarize what we have done and the general methods to differentiate implicitly, in general what we want to do in this process is find the rate of change of y with respect to x along a general curve of the plane given by an equation relating x and, relating x and y. To do that, we're going to differentiate both sides of the equation of the curve. We're going to differentiate with respect to x, but treating y as a function of x. Therefore, we're going to have to use the chain rule each time we have an expression that depends on y, treating y as a function. Once we have done that, we're going to obtain an equation that relates x, y, and the rate of change of y with respect to x. In this equation, we can solve for dy over dx. And if we are looking for dy over dx in order to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at a certain point, we're going to have to plug the coordinates of the points of tangency in the expression for dy over dx. 
Let's look at a second example. We want to find the tangent line at the point of coordinates 1, 2 to the curve of equation x cubed plus y cubed equal 4xy plus 1. Note that indeed if x equal 1 and y equal 2, if we plug that in the equation we get 1 plus 8 on the left and 4 times 1 times 2, 8 plus 1 on the right and therefore the equation is satisfied. So we're going to proceed by implicit differentiation to find the slope of the tangent line which is going to be the rate of change of y with respect to x when x is 1 and y is 2. To do that we differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. When I differentiate x cubed I'm going to get 3x squared, just the power of the variable. When I differentiate y cubed I have the cube of a function so I need to use the chain rule. I'm going to get 3 times the square of that function multiplied by the derivative of the function, which in our case is dy over dx. So I get 3y squared dy over dx. On the right hand side, when I differentiate 4xy, I can factor out the, the 4, and then I have to differentiate the product xy. So I multiply the function f of x equal x with the function y that I don't have explicitly in terms of x but nevertheless is a function of x or at least can be treated as such. So I have a product and therefore I use a product rule get derivative of the first factor, derivative of x is 1 multiply by the second factor unchanged it's going to give me just y and then I have first factor unchanged, that's x multiplied by derivative of the second factor and that's just the derivative of y Therefore, I get 4 multiplied by y plus x dy dx. Derivative of 1, of course, is 0. Now, I have an expression that relates x, y, and dy over dx, and I want to solve for dy over dx. To this end, I can look at the terms that contains dy over dx and put them together. What I mean by that is put them all on the same side of the equation and factor out dy over dx. If I do that, I have dy over dx multiplied by 3y squared on the left hand side and 4x on the right hand side. If I put everything on the left hand side, I get 3y squared minus 4x. The terms that do not contain dy over dx are all put on the other side, so I get 4y on the right hand side and 3x squared on the left hand side, which when I put it on the other side becomes negative 3x squared and therefore I obtain this equation. Now dy over dx is simply the quotient of 4y minus 3x squared by 3y squared minus 4x. In our case we're interested in what happens at the point of coordinates x equal 1, y equal 2. So we plug in these values and we obtain that the slope dy over dx at this point is 5 eighth. Therefore, the tangent line has equation y minus 2 equal 5 eighth of x minus 1 because we are looking at the point of tangency of coordinates 1, 2. Move to the next video if you want to see more examples.